It's a beautiful sunny Sunday and I'm going to head out to get some new pots and bowls for my garden. There are several places around my area where they sell some pots and bowls for, for plants and landscaping. And I figured I should go visit a few of them just so I could have a look at some of the pots and bowls that are available. Because there's nothing like a bit of visual stimulation to get your creativity flowing, you know? So I'm hoping to grab at least a few bowls today. And if not, at least I would have some inspiration, design inspiration, because I would know what types of bowls are out there. Because unfortunately, they don't get to post everything online on the website, so there are some, you know, there are some little gems that you would find in store, in person, and that's what I'm going to do now. I want this one. But it's just so damn expensive. If you look, it's $1.99. <laughs> I don't have that money on me. I haven't decided if I want something glazed or not. So I guess I'll just have to keep looking. I might get some inspiration that way. So we can dance to the night. This is quirky. A buffalo or what's known in the Philippines as a carabao it's totally not my style but I like it I think I like this one go for 29 each and they have a decent depth to them alright I'm placing this on my short list I'm a fan of earth colors and this ones are also 29 it's an alternative. Take it on. I'll be waiting for you. A small bonsai pot like this might be good for small plants like Semper Vivums. But I'm not yet working on one right now, so maybe next time. At least I know it's there. Yeah, I think I'm going for this one. I've made my pick, so I'm just going to back up my car so we can load it in. I've got five of them. I think they should be enough for now. Despite my hasty driving, they made it back home safe and sound. <laughs> Some of them have shifted to the side though, but it's okay. I forgot to measure it earlier, but the internal diameter is 25 cm. It's pretty good. And what I like about it is that it's pretty deep, so it's a lot deeper compared to my other bowls. Oh, and one more thing, unlike most of the pots and bowls out there, this one does not taper downwards. So it's more or less a cylinder in shape. This means that there's still a lot of space uh, at the bottom end for the roots to stretch out. So I think this would be perfect for my larger freely etched areas. The pot is made out of hard clay. This means that there, it is less likely that this will break. And I think that just like regular terracottas, this might al still allow water to seep through the walls. And this is perfect, especially now that we're on our way, well on our way to towards winter. As you can see from the markings, this one they sell this one for $29 each and I asked for a discount since I was getting five. They, they put it at $21 and with five of these pots, that's about $40 worth of savings. Pretty good deal, man. It is pretty bright outside and without the shade cloth on top, the view is much different than before. So I'm still getting used to it again. Because it's been a while since I last explored the garden without the shade cloth on top of them. 
However, if you're also from Melbourne, you might be questioning the wisdom of removing the shade now. Because right now, we're still getting some weekends with over 30 degrees Celsius. In fact, according to the forecast, we're going to have a 33 degree day on Saturday. And I've been watching this closely over the past few days. So sometime last week, there was a forecast for getting about 38 degrees on Saturday and, and, and about 35 for Sunday. And because of that, I was starting to think the worst and I was considering putting up the shade cloth again, at least on one side of the garden. Because the ones along the fence are doing really well right now. As we get closer to the weekend and checking the forecast, it seems that the projections are changing and the temperature is going lower now. Instead of going all the way up to 38, it's now sitting at 33 for Saturday. There's a chance of rain Saturday night, which means that Sunday would be much cooler than previously thought. According to the forecast, it's now hovering somewhere in the mid-20s mark, so that's pretty safe. However, the plants are not going out unscathed because apparently last, last weekend I didn't catch it because I was out with my family and my relatives you know, on a trip. And we had a freak heat wave. It went it didn't go high into the 30s. Well, it was somewhere in the 33 to 35 range. But that's still enough to fry some of the younger plants. So when I went home, this is what I saw. And yep, this was what greeted me. There are some burn marks along the older leaves of most of my echeverias. But this does not really concern me. I'm not that concerned because if you look at the center, Let's say this Etna. The younger leaves are doing better. This is this is mainly because the farina on the younger leaves are thicker. Same thing here on the pompous. So I'm pretty sure that they would be doing fine. And there's just one more day, and that's this coming Saturday where we're going to have a really hot day. I may not go as far as building the whole shade structure on top of them but at the very least I could just lay the cloth on top of them just to give them some break from the heat that we're going to have on Saturday. Now I'm going to give you a quick overview of the ones that burnt and the ones that didn't because this would help you understand why I don't seem to be panicking. First off we have the lighter Cheverias and at the top you see the Kante Man, the sunlight, the sun is coming out again. So the lighting is changing. So up top, this is the Kante. This is a Domingo. This is a Pearl von Nunberg. I can't remember what I can't remember what this one was, but I have a feeling this is a it's either a Bluette or a Lazarus, Lozanoi. And no, this might be this might be the Dorothy, and that was that's the Lozanoi. So they're doing fine and this is mainly due to their light color and in case you're wondering how that had to do with anything it's mainly because as you know if you still remember your physics white surfaces or lighter surfaces reflect reflect the light while darker surfaces absorb the light so these guys have reflected the light and they are not sustaining any burns as we go to the darker ones here they have sustained a bit of sun damage but this is on the older leaves and again this is mainly because they were in shade during most of summer so they didn't have to put out much farina on the older leaves the newer leaves are doing much better though because due to the increasing heat they had to put out leaves with more protection another thing that's making me feel secure about it is this type of behavior so when they feel too hot they start closing up this is the pompous a side view of the pompous I don't have a photo or a video from last week but this used to be much more open you will also see the same trend with the other plants here say for example this colorata branti it's pretty closed up tight right now mainly due to the heat and this is their defense mechanism protecting the inner leaves from damage it helps them trap more moisture that way they don't lose lose too much water 
So that takes care of the tour of that side. And now on this side, as you can see, they are doing much better here because this is mainly because of the position. This is a this is an east facing wall, which means that that fence is on the west side of our property. That means that the sun sets over in that area and at the other side, that's where the sun rises. And if you can imagine things, that's the northern part of our property, the northern fence. So the sun comes out here, goes up, then sets in the west. And if you can imagine things, in the morning when it's, when it's still pretty cold, the sun would be at this position. And in the morning, they would be receiving direct sunlight. But in the afternoon, when the sun is more towards in this section, then the sunlight would be in this direction. Our neighbor's house and the fence would be providing shade on these plants, so they won't be suffering as much as this, guys. So my decision for removing the shade structure on this side is all right, but I might have been too premature with removing this side. So I'll have to check again by Friday or before the weekend just to see if I would still need to add a shade cloth on top of them and whether I have to go as far as creating the, the structure again or if I just have to just lay the cloth on top of them. It's one thing just laying the cloth on top of them to protect them against the heat and we also have the issue of uh, strong winds that we usually get in Melbourne. So if the winds get strong on Friday, depending on the forecast, I might have to peg them down or just build a temporary structure. It usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes setting things up. So we'll see. Another reason why I feel confident about leaving them out without the shade is because of this ones which I moved out here. As you can see, they have no cover on top of them. And they have been out here for much longer than the other plants. Granted that they are being shaded by the fence in the afternoon. And as you can see right now, it's bright here and the shadow is falling out here at the moment. Still, they are having enough direct sunlight during most of the day. And this tells me that removing the shade is an okay decision. And here's another set of plants to help prove my point. These are the imbricata right outside of our laundry. And as you can see, they have full exposure to the sun. They are exposed the whole day pretty much. There's no shade cloth on top of them. And they are, they are doing alright. Now here's a closer look on some of them. They are getting pretty stressed as you can see with the colors. And you'll also notice that the younger leaves in the middle they are much shorter than the ones outside and no this is not entirely just due to the age of the leaf this actually has to do with the heat so the hotter it is in your area and the shorter or the smaller the plant the shorter the growth they don't tend to grow much when it is too hot there might be several reasons to explain this one of which is they're trying to reduce their surface area that way they preserve any water that they get. They would lose a lot less due to evaporation. This might also explain why plants in the tropics are smaller than the ones that are in the temperate areas. I'm going to do a bit of research myself and see if there are any published articles about this just to confirm my line of thinking. But I've been noticing this for quite a while now. And now that we're on the subject of imbricata, I'd like to show you some of them. The ones you're seeing right now are the ones that I planted out in the open. And they're looking pretty nice. They're compact and they have grown quite a bit. Some of them have colored really well. These ones have a very lovely shape. You might also remember this ones. I planted this out here recently. And as you can see, they haven't seemed to burn yet. And they're starting to curl upwards as if they're getting ready to protect themselves from the sun. I think it has only been a week since I planted them, so I still have to wait another week and see how they have responded by then. Check out the plants in the alcove. They're looking a lot bigger than the ones that are exposed to the sun outside. So maybe heat does play a part in this. 
And now you're probably wondering what these balls were for. In the opening sequence, I, I went to the shop to get these five balls. And I'm pretty sure you would have guessed that it's going to go into this landscape right here. And right now, I'm still looking for more balls that I would like. These are one of the taller types. These are not actually balls, but more of like cylinders. I'll still be looking for balls that are that have a bigger diameter than this and maybe about the same height it will take quite a while but i'll get there the reason why i bring this up because i've got an idea on what to do with some of the space here so i'm going to set up some of the specimen plants some of the best and the biggest and i'm going to showcase them here give them a prominent spot because of that i have thought of giving it out as a reward on my patreon you get to pick one of the plants right here and you're going to be its sponsor and what that means is that i'm going to give you naming rights you have complete freedom on what you have to name it as long as it's wholesome and not inappropriate although if you decide to name this one freely mac freely face i would not object to that <laughs> that's all right so what i'm going to do is let's say you pick this one and name it name this one as maybe frank i'll be putting this inside one of the big bowls, the big pots here. I'll stage an area where it would be very prominent and I'll put a name tag. I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking of the material that I'll be using. Right now I just have this T, T-shaped uh, tags. I'll be looking for something more sturdy, more permanent than this because this one kind of fades depending on the marker that you use. I'll be designating a spot for them so once I get to clean up this area and landscape a bit out of it, then there would be about five to ten spots. Right now I have I only have five pots, but I'll be getting more in the near future. So there would be ten spots, and that means that I would be looking for ten sponsors. On top of the naming rights, you would have I would be sending you photos of it through the seasons. If you've seen my Facebook, you might have already seen my compilation album of them. So as a recap, on top of the naming rights, you would be getting periodic compilation photos of them, update photos, and I'll be mentioning them specifically for everyone to know and see. And apart from that, as soon as you pledge your support, I'm going to send you a bunch of photos of what's available and you can pick them. And I'll, create, I'll also create a video about it, showing the plant that you picked, the name that you picked for it, your name, just to give you credit. And I'll create a video showcasing that as a way of thanks for your support. You know something that I find really heartwarming is that I only updated the reward tiers a few nights ago or was it a couple of days ago and one of my patrons jumped at the offer immediately. It feels really good that people are going this far to support this channel so I thank you so much and just in case you were wondering who it was Oscar Reno. And now that we're on the topic of patrons, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. That's you, Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Camille Cerillo, and Gloria Ninotti. Thank you so much for helping me get Seriscapades to where it is now. And for everyone else, you can check my Patreon at patreon.com slash And you can pledge any amount that you feel comfortable with. No obligations. I'm going to spend the rest of the week mulling over the fact that the plants might be getting sunburned. But I'll continue checking the forecast Friday night and see if anything improves. And if things look better by Friday night, then I won't do anything else. But if things get worse, then I'll just work on the shade structure in the morning. Or just lay the cloth on top of the plants. Either way works. Because I think I would only need to protect them on that Saturday afternoon. So, so far, as we get closer to the weekend, it's telling me that the forecast for Sunday would be much better. At least that's one day less of worrying. Autumn is finally here, and I can't wait to see all of them opening up again, no longer shielding themselves from the heat of summer, and just basking in the sunlight without the fear of being sunburnt. And by the way, stay tuned on this channel because I would be working on collaboration videos with some of my friends. There would be a bit of variety. Everything would still be succulent related, but there would be I would be injecting a bit of variety to it, just to mix things up a bit, and keep things fresh and interesting. So I hope you look forward to that. So until then, bye.